Greetings mortals, I am Nictus, the ruler of the underworld, and today we will be reacting to the newest chapter of Black Clover, chapter 357, titled, THE DECISIVE flying FINAL SLASH! Sounds like Lucius is going to get slashed up this chapter. But anyways, before we get into that epic final slash, let's get into this chapter chronologically. Anyways, we start this chapter off the same way we ended it last time, with you know going for the slice at Lucius, Lucius at, from a bottom-up perspective. As the narrator tells us, you know versus Lucius, he unleashes his full strength, but Lucius's generation is too powerful for him. Well, no, I was that's what I was expecting, but in reality, what happened is just Lucius just grabbed his hand and just kind of cut it, similar to how like. Lucifero grabbed Austin when he went for the blade, just, you know, kind of just a stun grab. As we have Lucius explained to us that my physical strength has increased greatly, having absorbed Lucifero, an attack like that won't reach me. As, and while Lucius says that very confidently, the fact is that he's gonna kind of be asking it because he's like shaking. King with it, like, uh, oh shit, uh, um, yeah, yeah, he's holding it, but it's like, all right, full, I gotta hold full strength, I need to look to make this look cool. <laughs> now, to be fair, I do think it maybe it has to be more how he's holding it, but he's holding it like this, it's not like this, this or you know, some kind of more proper blocking manner. But regardless, whatever makes it look cool, I guess. So, yes, he says that. Now, this, um, in fact that uh, Lucius' physical strength did increase after he absorbed Lucifero is... I get... Could be a case of a bit more of debatable because the way I interpret him saying that is more like... It's not like he got... This is where he was. This is where Lucifero was. And he now gets like this. It seems to be more like, oh, because he absorbed that, he automatically got a bit of his physical strength. Like, somewhere... Like, somewhere in this ballpark. Not 100% here, but somewhere here. Maybe 50% of Lucifero's physical strength if you want to be generous, but yeah, physically he got a bit of a buff. But regardless, then we have Lucifero starting to explain to us a bit. Using such extreme magic, even you can't last very long, can you? So he says like this, all these spells at once, this um, Neverland spell, it has to be like a very, you know, something to finish, give them a very huge advantage early on so they can win faster kind of deal. Same to all, like they always go into their transformations as soon as they arrive kind of deal. So he will not run. So he expect so Lucifero expect well Lucius expects this to be the case here. As we also see the mag the cool Peacock's Magic Knights going for using this to strike. So this may not have a big time limit, although judging by Luc by Uno's expression, I am not exactly certain if that is true or if that's just um you know, just something uh, that Lucius is assuming because you know has like a like he doesn't have like a shit you figure it out or like we don't get any in a month like just kind of you, you know a bit more pissed off with a more a pissed off comic expression. The difference is that his eyes usually look more sharp when he says it when he has that this expression. As Lucius also says, it isn't the best idea, really. You're only prolonging their suffering. So Lucius doesn't think this will last long, although I could easily see there being some kind of other, the you know, plot the thing. You know, I mean, Luno has this thing where he usually has an OP power up on top of OP power up. I mean, just look at uh, Spadok. He got two fucking we spirit weapons, both of which were strong enough to beat 80% Xenon. And then a hundred percent Xenon. So I wouldn't be surprised if there's like one more spell, uh, one more spell up uh, you know, sleeve to use against here that he's just not using it right now. More of a less minute emergency kind of deal. <laughs> when you realize if Yuno Sim just went into Spirit of Boyas against Xenon in the beginning, he would probably have been able to kill him. But uh, boy, that was the name of this boy now, right? Ah, who cares? But yeah, anyways, then we cut to uh, Morgan and Jack and Yami, as we have Jack uh, laying low as his uh, stomach here wound is healing fully, as Yami is staring at Morgan, as then we get a bit of a inner monologue from Jack and his back, a bit of a backstory, you know. We have to uh, red flag his, 
Death or being turned to a paladin, one of the two, whichever one you want to go with. As Jack uh, thinks to himself, Ah, oh, damn it! Am I gonna die without even being able to do anything? Like, seriously, brother, can't you at least have me, like, defeat one mildly important opponent instead of just going into, like, a draw with them? But, yeah. Anyways, uh, we now go to a flashback where we have, uh, Jack look a bit worried and scared as we see some dark magic around him, you know, kind of like after effect. As we see that this is Yami, as Yami tells him, the hell did you do that for? As we see Jack with his blades, I guess he Jack tried to fight Yami. This was like the first time they really had their, you know, their rivalry going on. As then we have Jack thinking to so it's like a kick. It's like, right now I really could have lost my left eye. As then we have, uh, Yami telling him, he looks at him pissed like, Pay attention, moron. I know we both look like crooks, but we are allies, you lanky bastard. <laughs> so, Yami assumed that it was because he thought, Oh, I look like a crook, so he probably assumed I was a crook as well. Well, I have a magic knife rope, so I'm playing like a crook. <laughs> so, yeah. As the, we, uh, so, yeah, basically what we all had thought from there, that because you know, those two kind of are always in that kind of ballpark. But anyways, then we have Morgan appear as he tells Yami, The mission is complete, Yami. Let's return to headquarters. Oh, look at here, it seems like Yami, that Morgan was using some kind of teleportation or oh, spatial magic thing. Maybe he uses his light magic similar to how uh, Nock uses his shadow magic type of deal. But regardless, we didn't have Morgan also telling Yami that panel that we got in the... Like when Noct in the meeting with the Magic Knights recognized Noct and thought it was Morgan, we get this panel and we get a full context for it. As we have Morgan telling Yami, we have to get along with other squads, Yami. Which that just makes me think that Morgan was constantly like, Yami, we have to be nicer. Yami, you have to eat properly. And stuff. Yami, you cannot drink right before missions, especially with the intention of getting drunk. So I'm just kind of getting this vibe from Morgan in this. But Yami just tells him, come on, he started it. <laughs> so it's kind of funny. Which I think that is kind of the relationship that it was supposed to be having. So, you know, Mor not, yeah, Morgan saw kind of a lot of knocked in him. But regardless, Sweden, I cut to Jack's kind of group that they were on the mission with. As one of the Green Mentors is like, it's the light and dark duo from the Great Year. As in, some other guys like they are said to be the n top knights from our generation. Not that uh, this is like top knights from the, the from this group that joined, or this is like supposed to be like a general generation type of thing. Since you know, I would think up was like Nozel, Meliona, and Fugola would be the top knights because they're there. Well, to be fair, they're just like top knights. So like those two alongside those those royals would be at the top, which I guess makes sense. I mean, like no, no disrespect to Jack, but. I mean, Yami. Do I have to say more about Yami? Not kind of, kind of surprising to see that Morgan is apparently also one of the top knights since... I mean, not, not again, no disrespect to Morgan, but... I mean, it's not like we ever got uh, any kind of idea that he's like anything anything insanely powerful. I mean, he's nice than Nock, but nothing like... Oh, he could defeat hundreds or something. I guess he is also a very highly skilled one. But regardless, we didn't have the other guy also explain that light's the most powerful attribute while dark sp shrouded in mystery. They are both such sub rare substanceless mystical magic. So it's funny how rare those two are, which again makes sense. Like light magic, I do believe was said before to be the strongest form of magic, or at least natural forms of magic. And dark magic is something they don't really know. In fact, some people were even scared of dark magic. So it makes sense why they would be considered like the Top in terms of magic capabilities. But if they have not been like, Kaka, ka, interesting. I'll rip them both to shreds someday. Yeah, in your dreams, n not Jack. As they have Jack also thinking to himself, The heretic dark and the serene light, huh? So yeah, as he looks at that, as then we have uh, uh, Jack standing up like, Move it, Yami! As Yami responds, uh, to, as we, no, actually, I think that's supposed to be, uh, Jack telling him also, 
Don't you dare try to help me up, you asshole. I'll never need your help. <laughs> yeah, you're dying. You're, you're over. As they would see um, Morgan, like, I think the first time we actually see a full body shot of Morgan's Spellman form, as he gets ready to send another light magic attack, as Morgan tells him in his smile, he's like, with my light, I shall send you to heaven. And he immediately bring, and then Lucius will immediately bring you back to earth. <laughs> okay, kind of stupid, but whatever. Then we have Jack be like, <sighs> and there now, I've been slashing, 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 slashing. As we get the flashback of every time Jack used his light mag, or his uh, slash cut magic. And we see like uh, an army that some man getting sliced, the bear in his, when he was a child getting sliced. His fight against Fat though. I think the fight against Language and some other times. We also get like the slice with Dante, which is kind of, which kind of point this is the only kind of time we actually reference the Dark Trials. And again, I was thinking we were going to have it, but with yeah, Lucis, but now we have it here with just when uh, Jack was just beating the shit, slicing through Dante. But yeah, not even like new battles over, just like the same ones. So, yeah, as then we have a lot Jack getting his blades out, he thinks himself slashing his the hone is the to hone these blades of mine to slash through everything. This is my final attack as his blood comes out as we get the, the pay of the entire chapter, the fine no the decide the final slash as he goes to cut as we see Morgan's light. Spell going towards the army and Jack. As Morgan realizes, oh shit, I'm gonna die and this is gonna hit Lucius so badly. As then we get the next battle, as we see from the capital, the final side is going, go, just straight up going from that area, straight to, straight off the burial that the universe has encased them. As we see the slice actually still continuing post the barrier. Which means that even, which I feel like it's meant more to show off that fact, even without the barriers, Jack's final slash would have still been a ma major hit. As then we get a, a panel which just kind of shows us the level of damage. As we see the, the uh, hundreds of miles away from the capital being just sliced and honestly, the guy looks like he permanently damaged the area, not gonna lie. As we see two of those creatures getting sliced in half and falling, then we see some of the magic knights reacting with shock over the slice. We see Charlotte and Brandon be like, Shit, we really are the weakest two from the magic knight captains! As they both panic, as then we have Jack. Uh, back to Jack, as he just falls down. As Jack says, How, how was that, Yami? How was my final slash? As then we have Yami tell him, I hate to say it, but that was insane, Jack. As that's I said, then we have Jack. We have ka ka. I'll never got you. I never got to rip you to shreds. That's my only one only regret. As then we have Jack falling. As I guess he's dead. As the only thing of goodbye, Jack. But unfortunately, to Jack's final slash, his slash was essentially just it looks cool. That's why we had it because. Lo and behold, Morgan is completely fine and is literally just, I think he literally just kind of like moved a bit all the way, just kind of like this kind of thing. So, yeah, despite how cool that attack was supposed to be, it's actually pretty much nothing. As we have Morgan starting to speak with, if that attack had landed, I would be dead. Again! But, he yeah, easily managed to avoid it. Like, it doesn't even seem like Morgan was sliced in any kind of way. And then we get a bit of a sh sh shot that's supposed to be a very cool, dramatic shot with Yami, as we see his rope being flocking in the sky, as Yami looks at Morgan angrily, he's like, You ain't the Morgan I knew anymore. As Morgan just responds with his open eyes, as he tells Yami, It does pain my heart that all of you will die in droves now, but fear not. For all shall be born again, and all shall become happy. So, yeah. As then we get to the next final page of the chapter, as we see Meliona's fist, uh, not in her cloak form, going to burn Morris's fingers, but... 
But instead of getting them burned and smacking most in the face, we have her hand just dis her fish just disappearing as it kind of disintegrates. As she's like, "Oh shit, my arm disintegrated." I mean, are you telling me I'm actually going to get some consequences for being a battle-hungry maniac in Black Clover? That's so badly happened. That literally badly never even happens to vill to heroes. As we didn't have her. As we have the end of the chapter when they're saying, The next target to fall into the paladin's clutches is. As it seems to be Mel Leona, which I'm not really surprised that Mel's gonna fall here because I was thinking she's gonna fall so we could have fight, get some Fugolian stuff and stuff. I'm just being kinda. They're kinda parallel with Mel Leona, but clearly always saw that he's inferior to her, but whatever. We have her. Her there. Her. A shot of her there. So yeah, I guess Melior versus Moore is gonna be the next fight, which I'm not really excited for because again, like even if Moore is actually manages to take down Melior, like it's like it's kind of like my it's gonna be like more of those you need it for the plot rather than anything significant. But yeah, anyways, um, I guess I should also discuss this because there are some people that say that this may not actually this might be the devil that that uh, Morris has because it disintegrated while. Morgan's magic, I think it's just supposed to like rearrange and change stuff. It shouldn't like tear things apart. So there's some question about that, which I would say would make sense. It's, you know, I mean, these are supposed to be so combined with other devils, so it makes sense there'll be multiple magic attributes instead of something like Heath and Yule, who just seem to have like maybe their devil's attributes on top of their own. Like, I'm not even like, what makes sense that. You would just get your devil, like if you and the devil have the same magic attribute, would they would just power up the same or they count as a different attribute? Well, whatever, needs to say, Minora is using her arm, and if this, if the narrative chapter is uh, to be believed, Minora is going to be the fear next chapter, although to be fair, you could also have Fugol and be the fear next chapter. We'll see which one is going to happen. I mean, well, we really are just making the magic knights irrelevant, are we? I mean, I guess when it comes to manga goddess, it's going to be their homeland country be the main ones, while everyone else is just going to be irrelevant. I mean, all right, to be fair, I mean, to be fair, I would definitely put Heath below Morris and Morgan, but still, it's kind of like unfair. Like, they're getting wrecked by Paladins, while we have Destroyers to use and, and, and uh, each car both being said they could defeat the paladin, so it's kind of, you know, like a it's a bad look. But regardless, I hope uh, you like this chapter reaction. I hope you leave your, your thoughts in the chapter in the comments below. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more videos in the future. And with this that's it. I can I cannot wait to see all of your mortals next time. Goodbye.